What's going on, everybody? I just wanted to come on and touch on something that has drastically improved my filmmaking over the past year. It's something that has been right under my nose for several years of owning this camera and is now implemented into every single shoot that I do. So since owning the Canon R5, the camera that I'm currently filming on for this video, there's been a feature that I have never used and I've seen it in the menus and I've just kind of glanced over it and never actually clicked it. One day I was just poking around on the camera and decided, I wonder what that actually does. I'm gonna click it and I'm gonna try it. I went out in my backyard and I started just testing some footage and just seeing kind of what it looked like. And immediately I was surprised. I was like, oh wow, this is really nice. Like this looks better than anything I've ever filmed. And I haven't set anything up. I haven't done anything specific. I'm just filming plants in my backyard. What is this setting? So then I did some research and figured out that when you film in the 4K HQ mode on the Canon R5, you're actually using the 8K sensor that it has. You're using the 8K sensor, but you're getting it in a 4K form factor. So for editing purposes, for size purposes, for not having to use an external power source or battery. So you can essentially shoot 8K footage, but in a 4K size. So currently I'm filming in 4K HQ mode at 24 frames a second in C log three. I can show you what this looks like just with the raw image. So this is the raw image. And then this is with Rec 709, just a basic color correction. And then this is with like an actual look that I put on it. So you can see kind of here's the starting point and here's where we get to. I'm filming with one light above me. I have some practicals behind me. I have a tiny little bit of window light beside me here and a tiny little bit of diffused window light coming in front of me. But this is essentially just what it looks like. So if you wanna see the full capabilities of this, turn your YouTube video onto the 4K setting right now. I think by default, it's probably in 1080p. But if you wanna see the full capabilities, turn it onto that. But I find this mode and I'm immediately filming the best footage I've ever filmed and it's just nothing footage, it's just in my backyard. And I'm like, okay, well, let's actually try this footage out and use it for some projects. So I take it on the road with me and I use it for a few projects. And I'm like, okay, well, the footage looks amazing. And I can't believe this has been right in front of my face this entire time and I've never used it. So I have a project that was coming up at the time and I was going to the Middle East and I was filming this huge project over the course of like 14 days. And I knew that one camera was going to be my primary shooter because just the, the nature of the project was going to be lots of hiking and all kinds of adventuring around. So carrying multiple cameras that are all fully set up is just not going to be possible. Carrying multiple cameras is fine, but they're all going to be in case I have to build them and whatever. So one camera was going to be dedicated to primarily filming this documentary YouTube video. So I'm like, okay, well, I was thinking I was gonna to have to upgrade maybe to an FX6 or even laterally upgrade to the FX3 maybe or a Canon C70 or something more along the lines of a cinema camera. And I find this mode and I'm like, okay, well, I actually feel pretty confident that I filmed a few projects with this now and I'm gonna be able to implement this into this video. So I go all the way to the Middle East onto one of the most remote islands in the world called Socotra Island. It's off the coast of Yemen. And I film this whole video and I come back and I'm working on the project. My computer's cutting through the footage just fine. I'm filmed in 4K, 24 frames a second at this 4K HQ fine mode. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, this looks amazing. Like the depth of it, the, the colors, like everything is just phenomenal. Like I, I can't stress that enough. I was so surprised and, and excited that, okay, well maybe this camera has more to offer than what I was originally using it for. So fast forward to now, almost every project I've filmed, I have used that setting primarily. I haven't faced a lot of overheating issues in terms of settings that wouldn't normally overheat. If I'm filming in the direct sunlight, of course the camera's probably going to overheat because I'm, I'm overheating filming it. So the technology is probably going to be overheating as well. So of course there's some overheating issues with associated with any camera, let alone the Canon R5, which is kind of known to have a little bit more overheating issues, but just the footage I'm getting from this is beautiful. It's, it's amazing. And I just, I couldn't stress that enough about it. Now I'm also going to share some footage from some of these projects I've been working on because I feel like this is a good way to show like an actual in the field review of it. And I hadn't really used it that much even prior to shooting some of these. So this was, I didn't know that it was going to look this good once I was filming it. And then once I did, I was like, oh wow, this is, you know, 
this is this can hold up. And I'm still at the point where I kind of still want to upgrade my camera, but it has nothing to do with the quality of this. It's more just for the visual appeal of it. And then even to just get that next step in my career opposed to, you know, I feel like this is the absolute pinnacle that this camera can do. So maybe there's something more that another camera can offer. And it's always just fun to get new cameras and try them out and see what you can create with a new product. So this also begs the question, is the Canon R5 still relevant in 2024? Is it gonna be phased out by 2025? Have cameras like the FX3 and the Sony A7 series, have they kind of usurped the Canon series? Should there be an upgrade to the R5C or the C70 or the FX6 or any of these? And the answer is, this camera still holds up today. And I've made videos about this camera in the past in terms of some of the settings on it and video capability and photo capabilities and things like that. But still, this is my main workhorse camera. And it's been, I think I've had this camera for three or four years now. I have an R6 as well that I do more photo with the R6, honestly, for file size, like it's just easier to, to shoot with. And then I like to dedicate the R5 just for video so it stays fresh and it doesn't get a high shutter count on it as well. But if you're looking for a camera that does amazing photos, so this is a 45 megapixel camera, so it does amazing photo. It's still top of its class in photo. I guess the R3 would technically be a better photo camera than the R5, but in terms of just the industry itself, the R5 is still an amazing photography camera, and that's not what this video is about at all, but it's still an amazing photography camera. In terms of video, I've just shared that this basically is like a mini cinema camera. And even before that, I was getting amazing footage from this camera as it was. And then to implement now this new setting into it where I'm just pleasantly surprised by how good the footage looks. It's just kind of like, okay, well, this camera is definitely suitable for 2024. Is it now suitable for 2025? Has anything come out that has just excited me like when this camera came out? And the answer is like, no, honestly, there's the FX3, which has a lot of attention and rightfully so. That's a beautiful camera. It does amazing video, but it doesn't really do photo. Like it does, but not to the degree an R5 would. And with the FX3, you also have like, actual movies being made with it. So the movie, The Creator, was made with the FX3s. It had a few other cameras that were involved as well, but primarily it was the FX3 that you know was made for that movie. Albeit that it was an $80 million movie, so there was lots of other budget and things like that to be able to get that out of the camera, but Still, it was made with an FX3, and that's pretty cool for you know us creators that aren't in the movie industry to know that you know $5,000 camera can essentially be the workhorse for your career. So that's pretty cool. There's also the Sony A7 series. So they've been the creator's camera for a long time now. Like they do amazing photo and they do amazing video. And I'd say that they're probably on par really with the R5. Like they're very similar in that regard. So if you're just talking about, is it still relevant today? Of course the R5 is still relevant today. Should you still buy one today? Of course you should still buy one. You could probably even get them significantly cheaper than when I bought the camera and you're getting an amazing quality product. I've actually been seeing some on Facebook Marketplace and just like some used sites for like way less than what I bought them for. I'm like, should I just buy another one? Like this camera has been such a workhorse for me and I see it still being a workhorse for me in the future. Even if I do upgrade to a new camera in the coming years, I can't see that like this camera would be irrelevant. So this video wasn't intended to go deep into the settings of anything and the technical capabilities of, of any camera. It was just to share the fact that I found a new setting on this camera that maybe you knew about, maybe you didn't know about. But if you didn't know, now you know. And it's a very powerful setting. So if you have an R5 or looking to get an R5, this is a pretty cool setting that can definitely impact your filmmaking. And it definitely impacted my filmmaking. You may also be asking like, is is, are the file sizes bigger because of this? And no, they're actually like the same size. They're just a 4K file size. They're not any bigger. They're not like double the size because it's double the uh, sensor size. It compresses it down into a 4K size. So yeah, I just wanted to come on and just share that with everyone. It was something that I found in the past year and I thought it was super interesting. So thank you so much for watching everyone. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe. I have been more active on this channel. So thank you so much and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.